Oh, oh dang! I I just realized I I don't even know how to use this thing, man. Jeez, man! I've been there too, man. I can help you. Oh, really? I uh, I'd really appreciate that. You know, man, people think I'm a bad guy just because I'm a little threatening, but, you know, I, I, I like helping people, man. I'm not that bad, you know? Nah, you're great, man. All right, man. Go ahead, type in what you're looking for. Aw, oh, dude, come on, man. This is like a textbook. Yeah, you're right. I, I don't really want to read that either. I, I, you know, just just go on YouTube, brother. Oh, oh dude, no! no. Oh, Get that oh. off! Alright, you know, t t type in some more specific, man. Oh, 20 come minutes! On, oh, man. 20 the... parts! Oh, dude, come oh, on! This is the way I swear to Give me that thing, man. Oh, 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 come oh, on! Oh, dude! No way! Oh! Just click that one. That one, that one can't be that bad, right? 30, 30 minutes. minutes! No chapters! Oh. To me, learning to animate is one of the most fun, liberating, and entertaining things to experience. Learning animation software is not. The truth is, it's boring, cumbersome, frustrating, and worst of all, it's so goddamn dry, dude. And to anyone that says, don't worry about the software, just animate, hasn't tried animating traditionally in Pivot Stick Animator, or remembers using a key gen for Flash, getting tons of malware, only to draw something that's not even playable because you didn't understand the difference between a keyframe and a frame within the context of the software. You have to know how to use your tools. You can't make a nice wooden cabinet without properly knowing how to use a saw, sander, hammer, and a ruler. You have to be patient open-minded and accept that even eight years into knowing how to use something you're still going to learn new ways to bend the software to your will and there's going to be someone who just started using it and know way more than you the reality is that at six months you'll be able to use the software comfortably and adequately and at around a year and a half you'll have a fairly comfortable and efficient workflow and a lot of these tutorials and channels on YouTube are honestly doing God's work, managing to make a six month process digestible in around 15 to 80 minutes. The time you spend watching these will pay off immensely. Don't be that guy complaining about the length of tutorial, breaking down every step so you can understand what you're doing. You can't learn a software in a week, let alone an hour, not even 10 minutes. Don't be that guy in the comments that's like, this tutorial sucks, total waste of time. I learned more from reading. I'm that guy. That guy is me. That peanut is my brain. After learning two softwares from scratch by just messing around, the only thing I think of when I see a 30 minute, not even a 10 minute tutorial on how to use the fill tool, on how to do this. Why the fuck is this 10 fucking minutes? This is so stupid! Bro, I'm the guy in the comments these tutorial channels hate that's like, bro, there is no freaking way, no way you just made a 30 minute tutorial to show me how to turn on onion skin and make keyframes. I want to animate. Stop wasting my time. And then they reply and they're like, okay, bro, how about you drop some helpful knowledge that you obviously more than me and try to help begin instead of being annoying. Matter of fact, how about you make a video about it, bro? They're better than mine. A single- And now I'm four videos in. So obviously, if you couldn't tell, I'm an impatient, idiotic moron. So what is my solution for the four hour software tutorial? What am I going to do to make my life and your lives, hopefully, a lot more easy? We're going to speed run softwares, baby. If you haven't noticed, based off my portfolio, my demo reel, the few animations I do have on my channel, I am a primarily 2D traditional frame by frame animator. Meaning, I'm going to focus on how to understand these softwares from a 2D traditional frame by frame perspective. Okay? Can I tween? Yes. Can I do stop motion? Yes. Can I do After Effects? Yes. Can I do 3D? I actually can, yes. That was the first animation course I took like freshman year of high school was 3D animation. I hated it. Do I think any of these styles of animation are lesser than traditional animation? No, my first video is literally about how every animation is relevant in its own way. I personally just think jumping into 2D traditional animation is the easiest way to jump into it. That's right, I said it. 2D traditional is the easy animation. Get over it. You see that? That's what we're shooting for, kids. What does adequate mean? Understanding and even adjusting the workspace. That way you can comfortably move around and map what's important. Understanding your timeline and what it can do. A timeline is what makes animation software possible. So knowing how to read it, use onion skin, use playback, change your framing is essential to know if you're gonna animate. 
establishing hotkeys. Virtually every function in the software has a hotkey, so memorizing them can be nine possible tasks. So what I like to do, I like to cut the fat and memorize the ones that I care about or even bind the ones I care about the most. And just footnoting other functions as I use the program progressively. Understanding your brush options, how to freely adjust your nib, pen stability, pen sensitivity, and changing your brush is so important. That's how you express who you are with your line. Properly understanding how to color. Believe it or not, every software attacks color differently and it has its own nuances that are incredibly annoying and incredibly helpful. That includes how to use the fill tool, adding creating color palettes, and changing colors efficiently. The select tool. Every software also has its own nuances to the select tool as well, so it helps to understand each function. Importing files. Using images and video for references and layouts is so important in animating. Exporting. You'd be surprised how stupid this is and just general quirks and nuances with each software. These are the first things I like to look for whenever I jump into a software if I just wanna be able to animate comfortably in it. Not even comfortably, bearably. No add-ons. I like my stick, medium rare, salt and pepper, and maybe some butter. So that's how we're gonna cook tonight. I don't wanna deal with the headache of adjusting and adding scripts, and quite frankly, I don't care that much. Also, it's just straight up important to understand a software at its base state. We're not gonna talk about camera stuff. Animating a camera is a whole different beast some universal terminology for softwares. Onion skin, aka lightbox. This is what lets you animate because it lets you see drawings before and after the current frame you're on. Opacity, this is how solid an image is. So the higher the opacity is, the more solid it is. The lower it is, the more invisible it becomes. FPS, or frames per second. This is how fast your animation plays. I'd say like 90% of animation is in 24 frames per second. There's some stop motion filmmakers and artists that just like working in like 15 frames or 12 frames. It's all a personal thing. Exposure. This is how long a single frame of animation lasts on the film reel. So for example, if you want this frame of animation to last longer to help it have more weight, you extend the exposure from what is one frame to three frames. Each software refers to it differently. Some softwares use the terminology of frames and exposures, and others use keyframes and frames. It is very confusing and annoying. A keyframe is a frame, but a frame is not a keyframe because a frame is by default one exposure, but an exposure is not a frame. An exposure is simply how long a frame lasts. Does that make sense? And then there's also a difference between a keyframe and a blank keyframe. So a keyframe is a new drawing. A blank keyframe is a blank drawing and a frame is one exposure. This is why I prefer frame and exposure because frame you know is a new drawing and exposure is just how long it lasts. Versus keyframe and frames, it gets kind of muddied up, but it just is what it is. Audio scrubbing. Why does this Jodiso guy give so much of a shit about audio scrubbing? Why does he care? Because you can do this. <laughs> And then you can do this. Bro, Flash is not that bad, bro. At least give it like a real critique, bro. Like, what is wrong with you, bro? What what do you have against Flash? What is dude? It's it's really not that bad, bro. Pen stabilization. This essentially slows down how responsive the pen because it's not one-to-one -one on a tablet. It's gonna be a little bit jittery. So when you want to clean up, you want to increase your stability and draw slow so you can get nice, clean, beautiful lines. Stroke what it sounds like. Any line you make with your stylus is a stroke of the brush. And just general things that basically is universal. Space bar and holding in left click, that lets you pan the camera so you can move around the canvas. The wheel is typically zoom in unless specified differently. And then control Z is going to be your best friend. This is also just a general annoying quirk for every software. If you are trying to paint something and it's not painting, it's literally because the lines aren't closed. They look closed, but they're not. Now I know what you're thinking. Only thing I think of when I see a 30 minute, not even a 10 minute. That guy is me. I'm that guy. I am running six softwares. Why do you think we're at the three months later mark? I've done everything in my power to make learning a software as quick, digestible, and as fun as possible. And you know what? It's still frustrating, boring, and dry. That That's just learning a software. I am so sorry. This was a very grueling, exhausting process. There are definitely some audio issues in some runs. And after 300 takes, some not even recorded because I forgot to hit record because I'm an idiot. I'll take what I can get. I tried my best to condense a one hour tutorial into 15 minutes and under. And I managed to get, I think all of them under 13 minutes. I am not even scratching the surface of these softwares. This is literally just to get you started animating. I link documents of the maps I made for each run, as well as a playlist with amazing tutorials I watched as reference to make sure I'm doing the best I can. I don't even care if you watch the other runs, I just want you to animate in peace. That's all I care about. And if you don't see your software, take notes as to what I do. I do this with every software I try out. It is the first thing I do. These are the softwares I'm running. All right, let's start with Flash. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I just split this into separate runs. So whatever one you want to watch, just skip to that run, okay? <laughs> 